What's up, YouTube? Good morning and God bless. Um, so today, first of all, let me say that this video is probably going to be a hell of a lot longer than most of my other videos. A lot of my videos are short. And let me, you know, say that I don't expect a lot of people to watch this video. I definitely don't expect a lot of people to watch the entirety of the video. I'm just putting it out there for the people that can relate the people that want to know more, um, that's who this video is for. People that want more information about the prison system and, you know, moving towards some sort of goal of how do we fix, how do we reform the actual prison system to keep people from going back? Okay, so the question I'm posing in this video is why do so many people... Uh, that get out of prison, go back to prison over and over and over again, myself included. I was in prison four separate times. And to be completely honest with you, I didn't learn my lesson anytime. You know, a lot of people say, you know, well, man, you know, you think you'd go to prison, you lose your freedoms, you'd um, learn your lesson. The reality of it is nobody learns. Well, I shouldn't say nobody, but 99% of guys do not learn their lesson in prison. So why do people go, keep going back? I personally believe that the system is designed to keep inmates, convicts going back and back and back because it is a financial advantage for these private prisons and for all the... Um, all the monetary things that go into prison. <clears throat> so, for instance, you have a shitload of human beings that are guards. That is their career. They work as a guard. They get paid as a guard. Their 401k comes from being a guard. Their retirement comes from working as a correctional guard, right? A correctional officer. Do they want people to keep coming back? Do they want crime? No. Do they want people to keep coming back to prison? Absolutely. Because the reality of it is, if people don't come back to prison, their jobs go away. Police officers, while they're at, you know, they're out there fighting crime and they want to limit the crime, what would happen if there was zero crime? They would all lose their jobs. What about probation agents and lawyers and judges and district attorneys and assistant district attorneys and Bob Barker, who sells pretty much everything to prisons? They would all go out of business, right? So if there weren't criminals, so many people financially would lose out. So there's this monetary push to keep people coming back. So how do they do that? Okay, A, when you go there, here's the reality. When they, if you lock up a dog, put them in a kennel, put them in a cage, what happens? They go fucking insane, right? You let out a dog. If you keep a dog in a kennel or on a chain, whatever, and then you let them off, they run, they go crazy, they're barking, they're yipping, they're going nuts. Here's the reality. It's the exact same thing with human beings. When you lock them up, they turn into animals. Don't be surprised when you lock somebody up in prison and they come out worse. People aren't learning their lessons. They're turning into animals. Then there's a violent situation, right? So if you go to AA, they tell you when you want to become sober, when you want to quit drugs or quit alcohol, that you should take yourself out of situations, eliminate all the other friends that drink and do drugs and things like that in order for you to be successful. Well, the reality of it is, it's the same thing with criminals. If you're trying to stop being a criminal, you want to distance yourself from other criminals, right? But what happens, you go to prison, you're now forced into a cell, into a block, into a prison with a ton of other criminals, and you're going to do criminal shit, right? When you have two doctors together, what do they do? They talk about doctor stuff. Two guys that fish a lot, what do they talk about? They talk about fishing, hunting. You see what I'm saying? So if you put criminals amongst other criminals, they're going to talk about crime, right? So that kind of perpetuates this criminal thought process, this criminal mentality. Um, 
and you're there, you're treated like an animal. There's little to no education. Um, they took all the trades out of most prisons. And then you're in danger 24 hours a day, right? You're locked in a cell with another man that if you don't know this person, you're, you're in potential danger 24 hours a day. Now you can walk around, I'm a motherfucking tough guy, that shit don't scare me, but here's the reality. I've been in some, I've been in cells with guys that I know I could absolutely whoop their ass, right? Some of these motherfuckers are crazy. And when you're locked up with a crazy motherfucker, even a badass, even if you're tough, you think to yourself, man, this motherfucker could stab me when I'm sleeping. So you're living in constant fear. Even tough guys get scared. And I'm not talking about like scary, like, like, oh man, this nigga's a pussy. He's fucking, you know, he's always oh, so scared. I'm not talking about that type of scared. I'm talking about having fear in your heart, right? And when you live with this constant fear, what happens is, you know, you, you grow into an animal, okay? So let's start there. Prison is fucked up, right? So prison is fucked up, so you become a fucked up individual. And then when you get out, okay, let's assume, you know, you got, a, you got an old lady, you get out, you know, you got a place to go. Okay, now you have an opportunity. But what about the guy that's done 15, 20 years? His wife left him a long time ago. His kids live in another state. His mom and dad died. And he's getting out to absolutely nothing. A lot of guys either get out and go to a halfway house, a homeless shelter, stuff like that. I ended up getting out. I lived with my sister and my brother-in-law. I met my wife. She helped me financially through like anger management, my probation fees, all of these things that I had to find. I had these uh, financial obligations. But if it wasn't for her, I would have fucking struggled. I would have struggled. I was in anger management um, with this one cat and he was, he had just got out of prison, got a job, got an apartment. Well, then his PO wanted him to do anger management classes. And he was in anger management, but he hadn't paid yet. The instructor was giving him a certain amount of time to pay. And he explained to the class, he said, you know, I'm in a situation where if I pay for my anger management, I'm not going to be able to afford my apartment. If I lose my apartment, my PO is going to put a PO hold on me and she's going to throw me back in jail for not having permanent housing. But if I pay my rent for my apartment, then I can't pay for my anger management and my PO is going to throw me in jail for not going to my, you know, not completing my anger management class. So it's like you're damned if you do and damned if you don't. Like I said, there's so many people that don't have these opportunities to, um, you know, to pay for all these sort of things. So then that puts you on, um, so that puts you up against going back to prison. And then if you're a successful criminal, you're used to making a certain amount of money and having a certain lifestyle. Now you're working at either McDonald's or a factory or something like that. <clears throat> and, uh, you know, so a lot of people go back to crime just for financial purposes. There's so many different things that can bring a guy back to prison that it's no wonder that it's a revolving door, a continuous revolving door. I think a lot of people just go, get out and get your shit together. It's like, okay, but how? For so many people, there's a but how. I'm not saying that it can't be done. Let me tell you guys, I'm not saying that it cannot be done. I'm not saying that every motherfucker can't do it. But there, there, there's a reason why there's a lot of fat people in this fucking country, because it's not easy. To, to have a perfect diet, to exercise, to eat right, drink enough water, not smoke, not drink, not do drugs. It's hard, right? It's hard to give up all of these vices and live completely healthy. That's why there's so many fat motherfuckers in America. So whenever you think about saying to somebody, we'll just stay out of prison. Well, then lose a hundred fucking pounds, fat ass, because it's not easy. In life, we all go through our own 
we all fight our own demons, right? Everybody has demons that we fight. And for a guy that's getting out of prison, it is a fight. Let's let's not make any qualms about that. It is absolutely a fight. It's hard. So we can start there, right? And there's so many different things that are st stacked against you. You know, you got your PO. She wants you to do this. She's got you in anger management classes, AODA classes, parenting classes. I mean, and then she wants you to work 40 hours. And then you have to do your community service. Plus, you have to pay your fines. And you have to pay the victim witness surcharge. And you have to, you know, pay your probation fees. And... And on top of that, you have to, like I said, you have to pay your rent, you have to pay your food, you have to have a cell phone, you have to, you know, if you're on the bracelet, you got to pay weekly fees for the bracelet. So it's hard. Um, like I said, I got lucky. I think God blessed me with my wife because I think he had a plan for me and he wanted me to stay out knowing that at some point, and maybe he knew it was going to be this. Maybe he knew at some point I was going to start doing YouTube videos talking about God and sharing the word of the Bible to other convicts, to other people that just normally don't go to church, right? Because just because you don't go to church, because you don't fit in, doesn't mean that you can't have a relationship with God. Look at me. I don't fit in at church, but I have a one-way phone. I got a, I got God's cell phone number. I can talk to God every day, 10 hours a day if I want to, and I do at times. And I want everybody else to know that they can as well. Um, so I think that's why God blessed me with my wife. And I, and I always tell her and I thank her every day. And I, well, I don't thank her every day, but... I do thank her and I and I let her know that without her, I absolutely would have been back in prison. I absolutely wouldn't have a relationship with my children. I absolutely probably wouldn't have anything, right? Um, but I think, you know, I think I think we're all put in a position to do things right. I think we're all put in a position with from God to have an opportunity to be successful. When I say successful, I don't mean financially successful, business successful. I just mean to be happy, successful in happiness in life. I was there for her when she needed me. She was there for me when, you know what I mean? It was just perfect. But a lot of people don't have that or even if they're given that opportunity, they don't see it because their life has been so fucked up, so chaotic for so long that they just don't see the opportunities there. So I want to let you guys know, yes, prison is a revolving door. Yes, they're setting us up to go back to prison. Yes, it's a fucking crazy world. But yes, 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 with God, with love, with talking to God with having a relationship with him, you absolutely can make it. I'm not saying you got to go to church. Fuck church, man. I, 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 here's the thing. I went to a church when I first got out. I live in a small town now, right? And I first got out of prison. I went to church because when I was a kid, we used to go to church, even gangbangers, even fucking drug dealers. You go to do a fucking, you, do, you go do a crime, you go into church, boom. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, bless me, keep me alive, keep the homies alive, boom. So when I got out, I was like, okay, I'm going to go to church. I'm going to start praying. Went, ch -ch -ch, doors are all locked. I was like, damn. So then I had to wait. You know, I looked on the schedule. They only open on Sundays around here, right? So I go to church. I pray, do a little bit of singing. I have a horrible fucking voice. So, you know, I don't sing real loud. And, uh. So then I go get, you know, body in the blood of Christ. As I'm leaving, the pastor says, if you're not a paying member, we don't want you taking the body in the blood of Christ. And I was like, a paying member? So what, we have to pay to receive uh, s salvation and forgiveness from Jesus Christ? And he was like, eh, that's basically what he said. 
I'm like, I'm out of here. Plus, I, I just don't fit in, right? But I don't want to fit in. Jesus didn't fit in. Fuck fitting in. So anyway, that's what I'm here to let you guys know. That you absolutely can make it. It's possible. If you're watching this video and you've made it 15 minutes and 18 seconds, which probably only about three of you will, I want to let you guys know that it's fucking possible, man. It's possible. I've made it. All right. Now, we, we got rid of everybody else. Now, I'm just going to be real with you. I made it. I got my own business, 920 Jungle Mover. Check it out on Facebook. Google it. Whatever. Created my own logo. Created a gangster ass logo. Got my own truck, trailer, all my own tools. I'm going to start doing fucking woodworking videos. I started doing woodworking videos on YouTube before, but I was trying to be fake. I was trying to, you know, hi guys, I'm brother, brother, brother. And I was trying to fit in. Fuck fitting in. I'm, I'm me. And you can be you and you can make it. You can make it out here, man. Fuck what they're telling you. You absolutely can. You guys have a wonderful day. That one motherfucker that's still watching, have a God, have a God blessed day. I love you for watching to the end of this video. You take care. You stay strong. Fuck what these other motherfuckers are talking about. Um, and stay blessed, my brother or sister, whoever's watching. Stay blessed. God bless you.